Today, I'm going to share with you an introduction to biblical fasting. Everybody say biblical fasting. Now, in the Bible, when believers would like to ask something very important or something very great from God, usually they would embark on prayer and fasting. You check the pages of the Bible and you would see this happening many times, right? Now, this January 2016, we as a church are asking God to renew our faith and devotion toward Him. We are also asking for a clear direction from Him for the ministry. And we also want His empowerment for all of us, corporately as an individuals, as we fulfill the great commission of reaching out to the lost and discipling them for God. And of course, we are also here because we want to uh, ask for the favor of God upon our individual lives and, and our families. And that's why, starting tomorrow, we are embarking on a week of fasting and prayer. This is a first for CFC, and I'm very excited to do this. Now, what is fasting? I believe that uh, some of you, if that many of you are already know what fasting is all about, but for the sake of those who are really new to this, let, let me give you a definition of fasting. Fasting is a chosen abstinence for a spiritual purpose. Again, fasting is a chosen abstinence for a spiritual purpose. It is intentional. It is something that you choose to do. No one forced you to do it. You are not forced to, fa you're not forced to fast. But you decide on your own that you are going to abstain from certain things, that you are going to fast for a spiritual purpose. Now, there are some people who uh, abstain or fast for health reasons under the direction of doctors. But here, we are talking about something else. We are talking about abstinence for spiritual reasons. Later on, I'm going to share with you the different uh, biblical reasons why we should fast. But suffice it to say at this point that fasting is a chosen abstinence for a spiritual purpose or a reason. Now, fasting is used as a way of sacrificing something very important to you. For example, food for a greater cause. It's also a way of showing how serious you are with the prayer concern that you are bringing before God. So serious, so earnest you are to the point that you are so willing to forego of uh, something very essential to your subsistence, which is food, right? I believe we all here love to eat, right? I, for one, love to eat. And not only we love to eat, we know that we need food for our subsistence, if we want to survive physically, we have to have food, right? So when we actually embark on fasting, when we are so willing to fast, to forego, or to abstain from food, which is very vital or essential to our existence or survival here on earth, we are showing to the Lord that we are really serious with what we are asking from Him, so much so that we are willing to you know, just sacrifice food, go hungry, just so he will hear and he will answer our prayers. Now, basically, fasting is abstaining from food for a period of time. Some people fast for a night. And they would spend time in overnight prayer. Others would fast for a day or three days or a week or several weeks. Okay? Now, some fast from all food. They won't have any intake of food for the duration of their fasting except for water. Others fast from only certain foods. They still eat other food, but they decide that they are going to abstain from, say, meat or abstain from sugar and so on and so forth. Or we may also fast from certain activities that we feel are distracting us from spending more time with God in prayer and the study of His Word. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4 says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Yes, we need food, physical food, to sustain our, our life here on earth, to survive. But guess what? That's not the only thing that we need here on earth. More than physical food, we need spiritual nourishment because we need the guidance and the blessing and the empowerment of God for life. In fact, even the food that we get is from the hand of God. 
Okay? So man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. That's why starting tomorrow and until uh, Sunday, we are going to allot this time just to get spiritual nourishment from God and not only physical nourishment. Now, what are the reasons for fasting? You see, you have to have the right reason. You see, fasting in itself has no spiritual value. Are you following? Fasting in itself has no spiritual value. I tell you, without a biblical purpose, you are simply starving yourself. Yes, it may help you lose a pound or two. <laughs> but that doesn't please God. I know some people say, oh, yes, Pastor Rich, I am going to join fasting because I want, I'm on a diet. I want to lose a pound or two or several pounds. Okay, it's okay to go on a diet, but fasting is not about being on a diet. That should not be a reason as you join us starting tomorrow. Your reason should be biblical. Otherwise, it may help, although it may help you lose a pound or two, it will not be pleasing to God. And when it's not pleasing before God, you don't expect God to shower upon you His favor. Because your action is an empty action before Him. Now, let me share with you uh, the biblical reasons for fasting. This is not exhaustive, but these are just some examples. So, you will have an idea. Number one, one reason why people fast, biblically speaking, is to look and pray for leaders. Looking and praying for leaders. Specifically, in the first century, when they would uh, look for leaders like elders and deacons to lead the church, they would set, a time, uh, set aside a time to pray and fast. And once they have found the leaders that they want to lead the church, they would set again another time to pray and fast so that the Lord is going to anoint these people and empower them for the ministry. Look at me in Acts chapter 14, verse 23. It says here, And when they had appointed elders for them in every church with prayer and what? Fasting. They committed them to the Lord in whom they had believed. That's one reason why we fast. We look and pray for leaders. Number two, another reason for fasting is to intercede for others or interceding for others. There was one time when uh, the prophet Daniel interceded for the people of Israel. You see, during this time, he was in uh, Babylon. You know the story? Because of their adultery for many centuries, one day God just said, okay, enough is enough. I'm going to send you to a foreign land in Babylon and you will be in exile there for the next 70 years. So one time when uh, Prophet Daniel, you know, was already there in Babylon together with the Israelites who were in exile, he felt this strong urge to pray for them. Because he understood that they were all there. They were in exile. They were out of the promised land because they sinned against God. And so he prayed. He said, Lord, please forgive us. Forgive your people. And he said, Lord, bring us back to the land. Look at that, Daniel 9, 3 and 4. Then I, Daniel, turned my face to the Lord God, seeking him by prayer and pleas for mercy with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to Yahweh my God and made confession, saying, O Lord, the great and awesome God, who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments. If you want to pray for other people and you have this great prayer burden, like you want your loved ones to be saved, you can pray and Fast. Because one of the reasons of, for fasting is to intercede for others. Another reason is to humble yourself before God or humbling yourself before God. You see, Israel in the past had many wicked kings. And one of them was King Ahab. Now, who is the wife of Ahab? Very popular character in the Bible. Was the wife? Jezebel, right? Now, Jezebel was so wicked. That's why, you know, people who know about her story, they equate her name, her character, with evil because he was just so powerful, 
controlling and evil Jezebel of course here in the Philippines every time we hear the word Jezebel we right away think of a mermaid <laughs> right <laughs> but in the Bible it's not a mermaid it's an evil queen now Ahab and Jezebel as a couple had led the people of Israel not to God not to the one true God but to idol worship that's why God just you know hated them and among uh, and the uh, main uh, you know they did so many uh, evil things that one day God said, I'm going to kill both of you. And disaster will, upon disaster will come upon you. In other words, God was going to judge them. And God delivered this message of doom and gloom to them through the prophet Elijah. Now when Ahab heard the judgment of God, he was so afraid. So much so that he humbled before God. You cannot imagine Ahab humbling himself. That, that's what he did. Look with me in uh, 1 Kings 21, 27 to 29. When Ahab heard those words, the words of Elijah, doom and gloom, he tore his clothes and put sackcloth on his flesh and fasted and lay in sackcloth and went about dejectedly. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Have you seen how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the disaster in his days. But in his son's days, I will bring the disaster upon his house. So likewise, if you have sinned greatly against God, you may also want to fast. As you ask for his forgiveness, you may want to fast to show that you are humble before Him. Another reason for fasting is seeking God's direction. Seeking God's direction. I wonder who among you here at, are uh, at a crossroads in your life. You have to make a decision in your career or decision in your family or in your studies or in the ministry. If you are at a crossroad of your life, you may want to fast in order to seek the direction of God. And this is actually what uh, the Israelites did one day. There was one time when uh, one of the tribes, some people from one of the tribes of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, committed a great crime. These people from the tribe of Benjamin abused a woman to the point that the woman died. And so when this news reached the rest of the tribes of Israel, they were so enraged. The elders, the leaders of the land were so enraged. They said nothing of this sort should happen in this land. And so they sent some representative to the tribe of Benjamin, and they told the, the elders, the leaders in Benjamin, to surrender the criminals. You see, the people from Benjamin were so proud, they didn't want to surrender the criminals. And so the rest of the tribes decided that they were going to punish Benjamin, the whole tribe. And so they sent their soldiers against them. However, on the first try, they lost. The bigger army lost to the smaller army. Thousands of uh, Israelite soldiers were routed. And so they went to the Lord. They said, Lord, please tell us, should we go against our brother, the Benjaminites? The Lord said, go, go up against them. And so they went again. Again on the second try, thousands of Israelites were defeated by the Benjaminites. And so this time, they were dejected, they were so down, and so they went to the Lord. Look at this, Judges 20, 26 to 28. Then all the people of Israel, the whole army went up and came to Bethel and wept. You see, thousands of them had already died in battle. And to think that they were the ones punishing those uh, criminals. And so they wept. And they sat there before Yahweh and fasted that day until evening. And offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And the people of Israel inquired of the Lord. For the ark of the covenant of God was there in those days. And Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, son of Aaron, ministered before it in those days, saying, Shall we go out once more to battle against our brothers, the people of Benjamin, or shall we cease? And the Lord said, 
Go up, for tomorrow I will give them into your hand. What do we see here? We see them fasting and praying for God's direction. Another uh, reason for fasting is seeking spiritual deliverance. Seeking spiritual deliverance. There was one time when a, a, a boy was possessed by a demon. The disciples uh, tried to cast out the demon, but the demons won't come out. Later on, Jesus helped, and uh, he easily cast out the demons. So after that incident, the disciples went to Jesus. He said, they said, Lord, what happened? Why couldn't we cast out the demon? Look at me in uh, Mark. Mark chapter 9, verse 28, 29. It says here, and when Jesus came he wa- when, and when Jesus was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, This kind of demon can come forth by nothing except by prayer and fasting. So we also fast when we need to do a spiritual deliverance. Number six. Or another reason for fasting is asking for protection. Asking for protection. At the end of the Babylonian exile, another king rose. But this time, not a Babylonian king, but a Persian king with the name of Cyrus. And he allowed the Jewish people, the Israelites, to go back to the promised land from Babylon. You see, Babylon, as a superpower, was defeated by the Persians. There's a new king and over the empire, and Cyrus was, uh, was very nice to the people of Israel. And so he allowed them to go back to the promised land. Now, one party that went back was led by Ezra, the scribe. Now, it was not easy to travel those days. They didn't have cars, buses, planes, boats. Okay? They were traveling on foot. And to think that they would travel with little children and women. And so what Ezra did, he proclaimed a fast. Okay, to ask the protection of God. Look at me in Ezra, chapter 8, verse 21 to 23. It says here, Then I, Ezra, proclaim a fast there at the river Ahava, that we might humble ourselves before God to seek from Him a safe journey for ourselves, our children, and all our goods. For I was ashamed to ask the, the king for a band of soldiers and horsemen to protect us against the enemy on our way. Since we had told the king, the hand of our God is for good on all who seek him, and the power of his wrath is against all who forsake him. So we fasted and implored our God for this, and he listened to our entreaty. This is very interesting or funny. He said, Ezra said to the king, King, the Lord will protect us. He said, King, the hand of our God is for good on all who seek him, and the power of his wrath is against all who forsake him. And that's why, although the king was so willing to send soldiers to accompany them to the promised land, he didn't ask for them. Because he already made a pronouncement regarding how God would protect his own people. And so that's why he felt the pressure, and so he turned to prayer and fasting. And indeed, God answered their prayer. Prayers. Now, as I told you a while ago, this is not an exhaustive list of biblical reasons for fasting. The point is, we fast when we want to bring a very serious prayer concern before God. What it is in your heart right now that you want to bring before God? Are you praying for something? Or you're praying for someone? If your situation is like that, you may come to the Lord praying and fasting. Now, if your intentions are true and honorable, I tell you, God will be honored by your sacrifice of fasting. And He will answer your prayers. Amen? I don't know if you are following my post on FB, but yesterday I posted several quotations on fasting. And one of my nephews in Bacolod later on texted me, and he said that uh, uh, he's uh, happy, he's excited for us that we are going to embark on a, on a fa- week-long fasting. And he said, it's really effective, uh, Tito. Tried and proven. What he meant is, was when we have the right intentions and we are willing to sacrifice, we are willing to forgo of food just to bring our very 
serious requests or prayer burdens before God, if it's according to God's will, He will surely answer our prayers. So I encourage you, join us this week. Now, there are actually many different ways or types of fasting. Some fast from all food, meaning they just drink water for a period of time, but the whole time they don't eat anything solid or any food. Others fast from only certain foods, like they still eat other food, but they say, I'm going to fast or abstain from meat or sugar. And actually, we may also fast from certain activities that may distract us from spending more time in prayer and study of God's Word. Now, here at CFC, since this is our first time to do this as a church, in the last 20 years of the existence of the church, this is the first, so we have provided here some choices. And for those people who are already so used to fasting, specifically radical fast, they will find our choices very easy, relatively easy. But since this is our first time, we want to go easy on ourselves. Now, here are the choices for you. Number one, you may choose that starting tomorrow until Sunday, you will eat no meat and junk food. You will eat no meat and junk food. And by the way, by meat, I mean beef, pork, and chicken. You can still eat fish. Okay? Maybe next year, we will add the fish. <laughs> Again, we should go easy on ourselves. Okay? No meat and junk foods for the whole week. You can choose that option. Another option is to skip one meal every day. And no snacks. Skip one meal every day, no snacks. By meal, I mean breakfast, lunch, dinner. You can choose from among them. And no snacks, meaning you will only eat twice a day. Okay? Another option is to skip two meals every day, which means you will only eat one meal every day. Maybe it's breakfast or lunch or dinner, whatever. Still no snacks. Okay? Now, here's the thing. Whatever you choose from among them, make sure that that's something that you are not doing presently. Okay? Say, for example, it has already become, have been your habit for a long time now not to eat breakfast. You only eat twice a day. Don't choose number two. Because there's no challenge there. There has to have a sacrifice. You have to show your earnestness to the Lord by making a sacrifice. Or maybe you are a vegan. Or maybe you're a vegetarian. Don't choose number one. That's nothing to you. You're already doing that. Okay? Now, another thing. You can actually combine them. Okay? You can combine number one and number two. You will skip one meal every day. So you will eat only twice a day. But whatever you will eat, has no meat in it and no junk food. You can combine one and two or you can combine one and three. It's all up to you. Now, just a word of uh, uh, advice or suggestion, if you can call it a suggestion. Don't load up during meals. Okay? Now, I can imagine some of you thinking, I will eat only twice a day. But I'm going to compensate <laughs> by eating a lot <laughs> during those two meals to compensate for the, the meal that I skipped. Don't do that. Eat regularly. A regular amount, you, or you can even cut down on it. But don't load up during meals. Now, choose one. It's between you and the Lord. Now, after choosing one or a combination of uh, two of them, on top of the kind of fast that you will choose, you are also expected, and I think this is also very hard, equally hard, you are also expected to abstain from the following for the entire week. What are these? Facebook, computer games, TV, and movies. Don't choose one from among them. <laughs> you should abstain from all of them. 
Abstain from Facebook, computer games, TV, and movies. Why? Because, you know, many times these are the things that actually prevent us from spending more time with God. I've heard it over and over again, people saying, or believers saying, Oh, Pastor, I'm so busy, I cannot serve the ministry. Oh, I don't have time to spend time with the Lord in prayer and uh, study of His Word. Only to find out that this same person sits in front of his laptop, scrolling da- up and down his FB page for two to three hours. Is that someone who doesn't have time? Definitely not, right? So, you should abstain from Facebook, computer games, TV, and movies. Now, for those of you who are, your work is using the internet or your work is using the Facebook, it's okay to skip this one. Okay? Because it's your work. We understand. We are not legalistic here. Okay? You can use the Facebook. If before God, you can honestly say that I really have to do this because this is my work. Otherwise, you know, tonight, I already posted mine. You can post a message to your friends on Facebook tonight and tell them just to inform you that this week, starting tomorrow until sa- a Sunday, I'm not going to check my Facebook. So if you want to communicate with me, use other means like email or cell phone. You can post that. Don't tell them that you are going on a fasting. Don't announce it to the whole world that you are fasting. That's a violation of biblical principle. Okay? Keep it to yourself. And God who sees you in secret is going to reward you in secret. Just tell them, you know, I will not check my Facebook, so don't communicate with me through this. So abstain from Facebook, computer games, TV, and movies. I understand this is very difficult. Right? This has become your habit to use FB especially for those people who are uh, avidly following the tele series, right? It's getting exciting on, uh, on the wings of love. Mang Sol and Rona finally uh, met each other. <laughs> yeah. You can watch it after one week on uh, I Want TV. No problem. Now, so those are the choices. Now, of course, I am aware that some of you are already experienced in fasting. Okay? So you may give yourself a challenge by going all the way, meaning a radical fast. Do a radical fast. A radical fast means that you will abstain from all food. You'll just drink water for a period of time. That's a radical fast. No food at all, just water. It's up to you. Make a choice. Now, how do we prepare for fasting? You see, this is no ordinary undertaking. You have to... Prepare yourself properly. Proper preparation is vital in sustaining a fast, no matter how long it is. Two ways to prepare for fasting. Number one is spiritual preparation. Everybody say, spiritual preparation. Now, how do we do this? You ask the Lord to examine your heart and to show to you sins that you have not yet confessed before Him or sins that you have not yet repented from. You see, the Lord requires His people to repent from their sins before He will hear their prayers. So if you want to, the Lord to answer your prayers, you want to prepare yourself spiritually by renouncing your sins, repenting from them, confessing them before the Lord. Psalm 66, verse 16 to 20 says, this is from the experience of King David, Come and hear all you who fear God. And I will tell what he has done for my soul. I cried to God with my mouth, and high praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity or sin in my heart, if I continued to hold on to my sins, not confessing them, not repenting from them, and holding or cherishing them in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly, God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God because He has not rejected my prayer or removed His steadfast love from me. So be sure that before you start the fast tomorrow, tonight you prepare yourself spiritually. Confess your sins, ask for forgiveness. Number two, we also need to prepare physically, right? Maybe you don't realize this, but you have to have a strategy, the right strategy at that. A few days before the fast, and it's already too late to give you this instruction, right? Because it's already tomorrow, but for the sake of uh, just educating you. A few days before you fast, it will be helpful to begin 
eating smaller amounts of food. Okay? Before you totally abstain from food. Because uh, by doing this, you are signaling to your mind and your stomach and your appetite that less food is acceptable. I don't know how you felt when you first heard from the pulpit that we are going to embark on a fasting. Were you kind of uh, worrying or concerned? Or afraid of fasting? Who well, among you here felt that way? That you felt, oh, I, I cannot do it. It's so difficult. How can I? Raise your hands. Don't be shy. Actually, I was concerned because I'm not really into fasting. And it's normal, right? We feel, how can I live without food? I'm a, I, actually, I'm a voracious eater. Relatively. <laughs> it does, it's, not just, it's not obvious though because it's in my genes to be slim. <laughs> But I eat a lot. I eat a lot of meat. I eat a lot of food. Okay, so I was concerned. So you have to prepare yourself because this is not actually easy. So before, a few days before, you want to start eating smaller meals. So for those of you who have not done that, you can start doing it today. Eat a smaller meal tonight to prepare yourself for tomorrow. This will signal to your mind and stomach and appetite that less food is acceptable. You can actually do it. It's not impossible. Now, here's another uh, advice. Resist the urge to have that last big feast before the fast. Are you following? Resist the urge to have that last big feast before the fast. I can sort of reads uh, some of the minds of people here. They would say, okay, tomorrow will be the start of the fast. I'm going to load up tonight. I'm going to eat so much so that I will be able to store food. Guess what? That won't help. That will just make it more difficult. Because a few days before the start of the fast, you should have started to eat a little to prepare your mind, you know, psychologically and your stomach, right? So don't do that tonight. Don't pig out tonight. <laughs> start eating Less. Now, some health professionals suggest eating only raw foods for two days before starting a fast. It's also recommended that you wean yourself off caffeine and sugar products to ease your initial hunger or discomfort at the early stages of your fast. Now, what do we do while we are fasting? You see, we're not fasting for the sake of fasting. We are fasting because we want to do something, right? So what do we do or uh, what are the things that we should do while fasting? For our week-long fast, we have prepared a devotional material for you and a prayer list. Later on, when you go out, make sure that you pick a copy of that devotional material. Looks like this. Fast, pray, ask. Even for those of you who are not yet decided whether or not to uh, join the fasting, just pick one. At the very least, you will have a material for devotion this week. Or maybe tonight you will change your decision. Maybe you will say, I'll try. Or maybe in the middle of the week you will say, I'll try. So just pick a copy from there. Okay? And uh, for th- say, for example, it's already Monday, tomorrow. You want to look for a time where you can spend time with the Lord for prayer and study of His Word. Now, for starters, you might want to sing a song or two of praise and worship to the Lord. You worship Him by yourself in the quietness of your room or in a corner. You do that. Then after that, you may proceed to doing the devotional. You look for day one and then uh, look at the passage, the assigned passage to read for you. For example, on day one, it says here, read Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 to 9, Joshua 1-8, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. And you meditate on it. Spend time. Don't just read it. Chew on it. Okay? Meditate upon it. See what the Lord is telling you to do. Is it rebuking you for a sin that you are currently doing? Is it telling you to do something? Is it uh, showing something to you or instructing you about something? Spend time, okay? If you find questions there on the devotional material, answer those questions before God. Spend time. Don't be in a hurry. Many of us just read the words and that's it. You know, that's actually, that's just like eating uh, without chewing. You just swallow the food right away. So spend time. Now, after doing the devotion... 
you proceed to the next page and you will see there a list of prayer items. So you pray for those items there. And of course, after praying for the items from the church, you may also add your own personal request before God, whatever it is that you want to pray for. Now, the basic idea is this, that you will do your devotional time during the meal that you have chosen to skip. Are you following? Again, the idea is that you will do your devotional. You will spend time in prayer and study of God's Word during the meal that you have chosen to skip. Say, for example, you have chosen to skip one meal. And that's breakfast. So instead of going to the table to eat, you will go to your room and spend the time that you, you use to eat breakfast to study God's Word and to pray. Okay? That's the idea. Because uh, here... In this activity, you are actually choosing to receive spiritual nourishment instead of physical food. So instead of eating physical food, you are there, you sacrifice it, and you receive spiritual nourishment. Now, I, it's possible, very big possibility, that there will be times, several times during the day when you will feel a strong urge to eat. Right? It will happen. So I want to tell you this up front. So you will, you will be able to prepare for it psychologically. At different times of the day, you will feel a strong urge to eat or feel a strong urge to open your Facebook or to watch TV or movies, so on and so forth. Now, what do you do when this, this happens? This is what you should do. When you feel the strong urge to eat physical food, don't go to the ref and open it. <laughs> don't pick yet the bread. <laughs> Or go outside, eat at a restaurant. Instead, go to a corner or wherever you're sitting. Spend time in the study of God's Word and prayer. Okay? If you are at work and you feel hungry, of course, you cannot uh, spend um, more time in the study of God's Word and prayer. Just pray. Maybe you can say, Lord, help me. Or we can start interceding for others. Pray. Or when you start to praise the Lord, okay? That's what you do. You show to the Lord, the Lord, I'm willing to forego of this food. I'm hungry. This is very uncomfortable. This is sacrificial to me, but I'm willing to forego this because you are more important to me. And I know that my, my source of provision comes from you ultimately. So I prioritize you, okay? And I tell you, you might think that you won't be able to do it. You will, really. When you got there to our uh, period of fasting, you will realize that actually things that normally you cannot do, you can do because the Lord will be with you to enable you to bear the fasting period. Okay? Now, after the seven days of fasting, specifically for those of you who will choose to do a radical fast, and by radical fast, again, I mean going without food. For several days, only water. If you choose to do a radical fast for a number of days, you must make sure that you properly break the fast. Right? So, how to break the fast for those of you who will go into radical fast? It is very wise to start with a little soup. Don't think, oh, I've not eaten for several days. I'm going to load up on the first meal. That's not a wise idea. Okay, you want to start slow and small. Uh, start with a little soup, something thin and nourishing, such as vegetable broth made from onion, celery, potatoes, and carrots. You may also want to start with uh, fresh foods like uh, watermelon or cantaloupe. Now, most experts agree that breaking a fast with vegetables, whether uh, steamed or raw, is best. You see, during this time, your stomach is smaller. So you want to eat lightly. And furthermore, don't eat until you're full. Just eat something. Okay? Stop before you feel full. Okay? Because you have to break in again your stomach. Especially for those of you, or specifically for those of you who will embark on a full fast or a radical fast. Stay away from starches like uh, pastas, potatoes, rice, or bread. For starters, on the first meal or the first day. 
Also avoid meats, dairy products, and any fats or oils. Introduce them slowly and in small amounts. Now, in terms of resuming any sort of exercise routine, that, that advice is the same. Start slow. Okay? Don't right away work out because you have to allow your body to readjust to the usual regimen. Now, just a word of caution. For those of you who will go into radical fast, no food at all, just water, before you do it, check with a physician. Okay? Just make sure. You see, radical food fast can be harmful to certain people. Now, just to give you an idea, here's a list of people who should not participate in a radical fast. If you see your condition here in this list, don't participate in a radical fast. Again, a radical fast is going without food totally. Not just keeping one meal or two meals, but totally no food, just water. One, those who are physically too thin. Don't do a radical fast. Number two, those who are prone to anorexia, bulimia, or other eating disorders. Number three, those who suffer weakness or anemia. Number four, those who have tumors, bleeding ulcers, cancer, blood diseases, or heart diseases. Five, those who suffer chronic problems with kidneys, liver, lungs, heart, or other important organs. Six, those who take insulin for, for diabetes or suffer any other blood sugar problems such as hypoglycemia. Seven, women who are pregnant or nursing. Okay? So be careful that you know your conditions so that you will be fit to do a radical fast. Brothers and sisters, I pray that what I share with you have prepared you for the week of fasting starting tomorrow. This week or starting tomorrow, we are going to ask God to renew our faith and devotion toward Him. We're going to ask for a clear direction from Him. We're going to ask Him for empowerment for us to be able to do the Great Commission. And we're also going to ask for God's favor upon our individual lives and our respective families. So I encourage you all, join us as we entrust our church, our individual lives, and our respective families into the hands of God, starting tomorrow. And next week, we are going to hear testimonies of how the Lord answered our prayers. For sure, under the right conditions, the Lord will hear our prayers. So all bow down our heads. Let's pray. Father, help us to commit to a week of fasting starting tomorrow. This is not easy for many of us. We're not accustomed to this, Lord, but this is biblical. This is what you want to see from us, to show that we are totally dependent on you, not, on the, not dependent on a physical provision, to show that we are really earnest, we are really uh, serious, we mean business as far as our prayer burdens are concerned. So help us, Lord. I pray that you will grant clarity to the mind of those who have not yet decided whether or not they will fast or uh, what option to choose. And Lord, we are not legalistic here. We just want to do these things uh, out of a willing heart. So lead us. And we pray, Lord God, after a week of fasting and prayer, Lord God, shower us with your favor. Answer our prayers for ourselves, for our church, and even for our loved ones. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.